Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Wakefield again, and uh, we're going to be now looking at the second half of the 5.7 worksheets. Okay, uh, we just did the uh, the previous part here where we had uh, we were solving quadratic equations um, right here at the top of the page. Okay, now we're going to move down to the bottom part of the page here where it says solving application problems. In other words, solving word problems. Okay. Uh, we did some word problem stuff in chapter one and chapter three. We'll see stuff similar to that here. Uh, a couple formulas that we're going to use to help us. Uh, you see listed here the area of a rectangle, length times width, and then we'll also look at uh, the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, at the very end here. Um, Let's jump right into the first problem here, and I do need to remind you that when you do these problems, do not solve by trial and error. In other words, don't read the problem and say, you know what, I'm just going to try out a bunch of numbers here until I find a combination that works. No, that's not acceptable. I, I, I applaud you if you have the talent to be able to figure out the answer that way. It probably means that your mind is working really well, but uh, I need you to learn how to do the process of... Um, setting up an equation or equations in order to uh, solve the word problem, okay? Because later on, when the problems get tougher, uh, either in this class or in a future math class, you need to understand that process because you may not be able to utilize that that talent that you have of, of being able to just pl uh, try out a bunch of numbers until you find a combination that works, okay? So it is important to, to know the process here of setting up the equations with variables that you've designated, just like we did in previous word problems we did uh, before, and we'll do that again today. So um, let's read the first problem here, and we'll go through the, the steps. We'll once again remind ourselves of the word problem steps, which we've used before, and we'll use them again now. It says the length of a rectangular sign, and go ahead and draw a picture if you like, you don't have to, is five feet longer than the width of that same sign. If the sign's area is 176 square feet, what is the length and the width? And so like we've seen on previous word problems, the first thing you do is identify what they're asking for, what you're trying to find here, and then use variables to represent those things. So we're obviously here, they're obviously telling us to find the length and the width, right? Uh, since that's two different things, we need to have two different variables. Uh, we saw this in chapter three where we were finding two different things and we had like those big box problems with like the three rows and the three columns. We're not gonna be doing those boxes, but we, what we did do that's similar to this is that we were finding two things and we had two variables in, those, in that section 3.2. Okay, so just like we did back in uh, section 3.2 when we had the two variables, two variables means, uh, in other words, if you're trying to find two quantities and you have two variables, that means we need to write a system of two equations, not just one, and they each need to have your two variables in it. Okay, so what we're going to do this time, instead of making the, those boxes like we did before, is we're just going to read through the problem and try to find a couple of equations all right, keeping in mind that usually in math, the word is, see how the word is is in this first sentence right here? The word is, as long as they're talking about math, that typically means an equal sign. And we know that an equal sign means an equation. So that's a, that's a good start here, okay? Now notice it says the length of a rectangular sign is. The length is represented by x. And so x would go in the place of the length here. Is means equal, so I'll change the is to an equal. And then 5 obviously means 5. Okay, that's something mathematical. I don't need to, like, convert that to something. And then here's the thing, you guys. The, the phrase longer than in math, that means plus, okay? If, uh, if um, uh, a particular table, for example, is 2 feet longer than uh, another table, then that means that uh, you would add 2 feet uh, to the smaller table in order to get it to be equal to the bigger one, okay? So longer than refers to plus. The, it says longer than what, though? The longer than the width. The width is the same thing as y. And so, again, our goal here is to convert the words into math. That means you want to change the words into either variables or uh, equal signs or, you know, plus or minus signs, stuff like that, uh, numbers, those kinds of things. The kinds of things you see in an equation, you want to convert your words to that. So that's one equation. Let me write that. Let me just transfer that down here. Now, um, 
we also need to uh, come up with a second equation. It says here that if the sine's area is, there's that word again, is, okay, 176. So they're saying it's equal to 176. But what, uh, what, how, do I trans, uh, how do I translate sine's area into math? Well, it says up here that the area is length times width, right? Isn't that the same thing as x times y? Okay, so length times width, x times y, and there is your second equation, and that's a legitimate equation as well. Okay, so we got our two equations with our both of our variables in it. Now, here's something that's a little bit different than what we've seen in the past, however. Okay, we need to realize that this is not a linear equation. When we were back in chapter 3, we had two linear equations and we were able to do the substitution or, elim uh, or elimination method to solve that. This is not a linear equation because this term right here is actually a degree 2 term, okay? Because it has uh, two variables in it. And so if you add, the way you figure out the degree of a term when it has two variables in it is you uh, add up the exponents, okay? They, uh, uh, we saw that a little bit there in uh, chapter uh, uh, section 5.1. Okay, we talked about that a little bit. But, uh, in fact, let me put that up here. Um, in section 5.1, when you had two variables in a term, okay, you add the exponents to figure out the degree. You cannot have a degree two or higher degree term inside of a linear equation. Now, this is not the end of the world. I'm just clearing things up here. Okay, here's my thing. Uh, if you have a linear equation, which this one is, because it's just got x and y separated from each other, uh, both to the first power, that's fine. A linear equation and a nonlinear equation, what you want to do in that case is you want to, typically it's easiest uh, to plug the linear one into the nonlinear one. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to do that here. All right. I'm going to do the substitution method. Since X is already by itself in the linear one, I'll take the five plus Y and I'll just plug it into the X down here. Okay. And just like always with the, uh, substitution method, you guys, you plug one, uh, equation into the other, and then you solve that resulting equation. Now that it has only one variable in it. And as we saw earlier in section 5.7, uh, when we solve uh, one of these equations, whether it is linear or quadratic, and you might be able to tell that this is going to be quadratic because when I distribute this out, we're going to have a y squared, aren't we? But whether it's linear or quadratic, I need to clear out those parentheses first, right? And then I need to move all the terms to one side. But since it has all three of those normal terms that we have, y squared, y to the first, constant, we want to move the 176 over in such a way that uh, the uh, terms are in this order right here. y squared plus 5y minus 176 is equal to 0. Okay. Now, uh, we need to do the Barry method on that. 1 times 176 is a... I'm sorry, 1 times negative 176 is negative 176, of course. Um, and then we need the 5 uh, down here. So what two numbers, and your calculator will really come in handy here. I know I kind of mentioned in a couple sections back that we don't normally have big numbers like this, but we do in this section. Um, unlike that problem I showed you earlier in our uh, earlier section where it was negative 432, Okay, you're not going to have like a whole bunch of different possibilities you got to try out. There's like 20 of them in that problem. This one, even though the number's big, there won't be a huge list of things that you have to go through before you find the answer. Okay, there shouldn't be. It'll, it won't be necessarily a short list, but it won't be as long as that. No, okay, that won't uh, happen again. Uh, but uh, here, if you use your calculator to help you and you list out the different factors of negative 176, you're eventually going to find that uh, negative 11 and plus 16, you know, if you list out the factors where you got 1 and 176, and then you've got 2, and you put uh, 176 in your calculator, and you divide it by 2, and you get like uh, um, 2 and 88, okay, 
and you just keep on making that normal list. Eventually, you're going to get to 11 and 16, but since one of them has to be negative in order to get a negative uh, number up here, that's why it's going to add up to 5. Okay, so we end up getting this y and y, as always, with the Berry method, since that's 1y squared, and then you put the minus 11 and the plus 16 in there with it. We're done factoring now. And we've got two factors right there. That's going to lead to what here? It's going to lead to y minus 11 and y plus 16. What two answers do we get? Uh, we end up getting, when we move over the 11 and the 16, we get y is equal to 11 or negative 16. Stop right there. Uh, yes, that's two different answers right there. But remember, we're talking about what does y represent here? It represents the width. When you talk about the length or the width of something, that's a distance, you guys. That's like a type of distance, like how long or how wide something is. That's never negative. Now, normally, you're not supposed to throw out your negative answers, okay? That's why we don't normally do that. But in this situation, because we're talking about like a real-life thing, like width, that is actually never negative, I'm never going to say that, hey, this thing is negative 16 feet wide. You, you don't talk like that, right? There's no such thing as negative width. So I'm going to throw that out because it is uh, talking about length and width right here. We're going to throw out our negative answers and just keep the, the 11. Now remember, when we solve a, uh, a two-variable system like we did in Chapter 3, the two equations and the two variables, you still got to figure out what the other variable is equal to. So you plug it back into any equation, just like in chapter 3, any equation that has both variables in it, this one's probably the easiest one, and we get x is equal to 5 plus 11, which of course is 16. So let's wrap this thing up right here, just like we saw in chapter 3 when we were doing word problems. Once you get your two answers, I need you to do two things. I need you to tell me how those numbers are measured. Okay, and you can see that they're talking about feet right here. Not feet squared, okay? Square feet is for area. Length and width is always just feet, you guys. Area is square feet. Length and width is just feet. So that means that uh, 11 feet and 16 feet are the length and width. But remember, when you're finding two things in a word problem, as in Chapter 3, uh, well, you got to tell me which one is which, in addition to telling me that it's feet and feet. Uh, since the 11 was the width, that must mean that uh, 11 feet, or sorry, since the y is 11 and since the y is the width, that's why the 11 is the width, and so the other one must be the length, okay? And that's how you do that one there. Let's keep practicing that now with the problem on the back side, okay? Um, we'll take a look at number two here on the back, or pardon me, not number two, what number is that right here? It just says EX, EX meaning an example. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, now it says that a pool measuring 12 yards by 18 yards is surrounded by a path of uniform width, okay? By the way, the word uniform, just like when you wear a uniform to work, okay, or something like that, it means same, just like everybody looks the same when they wear a uniform, okay? Uh, this, uh, this phrase here, uniform width, means that it's the same width all the way around. So it says if the area of the pool and the path combined is 315 square yards, what is the width of the path? Notice they're just asking for one thing this time, the width of the path. They didn't ask for the length of anything this time, just the width of the path. Okay, so let me make a note of that off to the side there. And then remember, when you're looking for just one thing and you just have one variable, therefore, uh, that means you only need one equation then uh, with that variable in it when you're doing a word problem. Now, I want to draw a picture here this time because this is a, this is kind of complicated without doing that, okay? Um, so I've got a pool. The pool itself, um, you know what, let me, uh, hold on, I don't want to get it that far out. It's going to be hard to see. Um, let's go and go like this. There we go. So the pool is on the inside part here. The pool is the inside uh, rectangle right there. Okay, let me make it look like a pool, okay, with some water shimmering here, okay. Um, and so it's, 
it says it's 18 yards by 12 yards. What that means is that whenever they say that a uh, uh, something is 12 by 18 or 5 by 7, like if you have a picture of your child that's 5 by 7 or something like that, it means that it's a rectangle automatically. And not only does it mean that, it means that the 18 and the 12 meet at some corner of the rectangle. It doesn't matter what corner you pick. As long as the 18 and 12 meet at that corner, then you know that you're putting your numbers in the correct place there. But what is also true is that once you put those two numbers on there, you guys, uh, it is true that the opposite sides are always the same amount. So that means that you got 18 up here and you got 12 over here on the left. This is all going to help us here set this problem up. Now, um, we also know that each one of the, it doesn't matter what part of the path you're looking at, this path right here, okay, this little width right here that I'm putting in green, no matter what uh, side you're looking at, bottom, top, left, right, all four of these are the same width all the way around, and we already designated that to be the variable x right there, okay? And now, um, what else do they tell us besides the 12 and 18? They also tell us that the, the width, or pardon me, the area of the pool and the path combined is 315 square yards. That means this. That means that this length, okay, and this width of the whole thing, not just the pool on the inside, but the pool and the path together is equal to 315. Okay. Now, whenever you multiply two sides that meet at a corner right here, see this corner right here? If I multiply these two sides that meet at this corner right here, uh, that will always equal the area. You can always do that when you figure out the area. You can multiply two sides that meet at any corner, no matter which corner you pick. Okay, so we just need to figure out what these two sides are equal to. Please notice, you guys, that um, this right here is x, this amount. Okay, I'm just, I'm just projecting this straight down right here. Okay, and then this X right here projects straight down as well. Um, and then the, the part in between those two uh, green arrows is this amount here. And that amount was 18, wasn't it? Okay, so I've got X, X over here, and then I've got 18. And so I end up this side right here, this entire side, if you add it all together, it is equal to what? It is equal to x plus 18 plus x. What is that equal to, you guys? x plus 18 plus x. Well, if I combine like terms, that is going to be equal to 2x plus 18. 2x plus 18 is equal to that entire side. Okay, so let me write that down over here because we're going to need it in just a minute. Okay, in a similar way, you guys, um, this right here, let's follow it here. This right here is x plus 12 going from the top to the bottom. It is x plus 12 plus x again. Kind of similar to what we did on the bottom. It's just that it's 12 instead of 18 this time. What is x plus 12 plus x? Well, if you, again, if you combine like terms, that is going to be 2x plus 12. Okay, so what we have here is we have 2x plus 18 and 2x plus 12. Those two distances right there, those two things, meet at a corner. And so you can multiply them together in order to get it equal to the area. But they already told us that the area is 315. And so we've got ourselves a legitimate equation now. Okay, remember to put these in brackets though, because as we said before, if you've got something with more than one term in it and you need to multiply by something else, uh, you got to bracket it. So since both of these things have two terms and they both need to be multiplied by each other, you need to bracket both of them. Okay, so this is our equation. We now need to solve it. What do we do, whether it's linear or quadratic? Okay, uh, when we solve the equation, we got to clear out our parentheses first. So I got to multiply out these two brackets. We're going to get 4x squared plus 24x plus 36x plus, uh, what is 18 times 12? Well, if you put that into your calculator, you get 216. It's nice to have calculators, right? Okay, and uh, 
now it definitely confirms now that we have a uh, quadratic equation because of the x squared. So that means that I need to move over the 315. Go ahead and combine like terms while you're at it. Whenever you, whenever you move terms from one side to the other, we combine like terms also. Um, and so we end up getting, combining the 24 and the 36, we get uh, this right here. Okay. All right. So, again, kind of a big number that we're going to be dealing with here, but the amount of choices you got to uh, go through to figure this out on the Berry method will not be as bad as it was on that one problem earlier in the chapter. 4 times negative 99 is negative 396. This, again, is why it's good to have calculators. Okay, but the middle number is 60. If you go through your different choices of 396, you're going to get 1 and 396 pairing up. You're going to get 2 and 198 by doing, you, you know that because 396 divided by 2 is going to be equal to 198. And so you know that 2 times 198 is equal to uh, 396. Okay, again, one of these has to be negative, though, in order to get negative 396. So keep that in mind. If you keep on going here, eventually you're going to get to 6 and um, 66. If you make the, um, the 6 negative and the 66 positive, okay, it's going to add up to 60. So there is your choice right there. Okay, so we get what here? We get 4x and 4x, like we always do with the Berry method. And then you get minus 6 and plus 66. But you got to factor out the GCF out of each bracket for the Berry method, as you guys know. All right, so I factor that out, and I get uh, 2x minus 3. And then you get 2x plus 33. There we go. Now... That's our only two factors there, all right? Those are prime, so we're done uh, factoring. We are now ready to set those two brackets equal to zero. Okay. I'll zoom in here. I know it's kind of small. Okay. There we go. And solving those equations, I get x equal to 3 halves. Solving the other one though, don't I get uh, negative 33 divided by 2 right there? Negative 33 divided by 2. But what's the problem with negative numbers in this case, you guys, since we're talking about width? You can't have negative width, can you? So I'm going to cross out the negative answer only because it's width. You don't normally do that on any problem, but when it's something that can't be negative, yeah. And so we only have one answer. There's not another variable. We just got the one variable, and they just asked for the width of the path. And so the width of the path is what, you guys? It is equal to 3 halves what? what how, does, how is it measured in this problem? Okay, well, you can see here that they do not use feet this time. They use what? They use yards, don't they? Okay. And remember, it's just yards, not square yards, all right? Width and length are just yards. Okay, area is square yards. So we say 3 halves yards. You can convert that to a decimal, too, if you want, or a mixed number. Um, but uh, you can just say 3 halves yards as well. Okay, so what I'd like you to do right now is try problems 1 and 2 right underneath that. They're very similar problems uh, to what we just did. Okay, so go ahead and hit your pause button and then hit play when you're done. And we'll take a look at the answers at that point. All right, now number one, uh, it says a rectangular parking lot length that is 10 yards greater than the width. By the way, you guys, greater than is the same thing as longer than. It means the same thing. And so it's going to have that plus sign in there again, just like it was on the, on the problem that we did on the front of the worksheet. The area of the parking lot is 119, just like it was in that first problem when it was 176. So a very similar setup. It does ask for the length and the width. We got that. We know that um, we know that uh, the x is the length. Length is 10 greater than, so 10 plus the width, which is y, right? And so there you go x equal to 10 plus y. The other equation is, uh, it says the area of the parking lot is, so 
uh, equal to 119. Is 119 equal to 119? The x times y, just like in the first problem, length times width is equal to the area, so x times y. I do the same types of things I did in that first problem. I plug in the linear equation into the one that's nonlinear. X times Y, remember, is nonlinear. It's a degree two term. Uh, if I do that, it's, again, very similar looking, like I said, um, all the way through. Uh, you set it up so that all the terms on one side, it's going to be the Barry method. We end up getting 17 and negative 7 as our two numbers that would go in here. Okay. Uh, and then we set those equal to zero. We end up throwing out the negative answer because there's no such thing as negative width, right? But we still got to figure out the other variable after we throw out that bad one by plugging in the answer we got into one of these equations that has both variables in it. That then gives me the uh, x number. And so since x is 17 and since x is the length, we say that the length is 17. But it's going to be measured in yards, which we got to say as well, because this problem is in yards, not feet this time. And similarly, uh, y is 7, and since y is the width, we're going to say that the width is 7 yards. Okay, so that is number 1. All right. Uh, number 2. Let's see what's going on there. Again, very similar thing here. And the only difference is that instead of a swimming pool this time, we're going to have a community vegetable garden. Okay. But it's a, it's a rectangle, though. And we know that not only because they say rectangular, but also anytime they say that something measures 15 by 12, in other words, if they have the two numbers with the word by in between it, that means it's a rectangle automatically. Okay, so I'm going to draw a picture of that right off the bat here. I'll keep on reading the problem while I'm showing that to you. But it says a path of uniform width is to surround the garden, just like the swimming pool. The area is 378 for the entire thing, not just the garden. And so it's a very similar setup where you've got the 15 and the 12. And then you've got the X and the X. Okay, each one of these red things is X. And so... You've got x plus 12 plus x is 2x plus 12. You've got x plus 15 plus x is equal to 2x plus 15 down here. And so those two things together then have to equal the overall area, which is 378. Okay, so now um, solving that equation the same way we did the swimming pool problem. Okay, multiply that out move over the 378. Thankfully, there's a GCF here. That's going to make the number smaller. Okay, and then we realize that uh, for um, 2 and ni negative 99, that is going to be negative 198. Okay, uh, and then it needs to add up to 27. Well, again, if you use your calculator to help you out here, you'll realize that um, the answers there for that would be... Um, 6, negative 6, pardon me, negative 6 and positive 33. Negative 6 and positive 33, and so we put those in there, okay. Um, and so that leaves me with a total, including the uh, GCF, that leaves me with a total of three factors there. I need to set all three of those things equal to zero. You got that right here. Uh, the first one, as we saw earlier, no variable, false statement. So that's a no solution thing, okay? And then these other two, if you solve those, okay? Um, I brought it up here, actually. You get uh, negative 33 halves, which I'm going to throw out because it's negative width, and we can't have negative width. And then the other one is just a normal positive number three. And so the final answer here, since they just asked for the width only, will be three meters, okay? Meters is how they measure the length and the width here, okay? And so that is problems one and two. The last problem here we're going to go ahead and do together, you guys. Uh, it involves that Pythagorean theorem formula I was talking about. Uh, just a reminder here, um, it mentions this on the front, but the, maybe the most famous uh, th uh, formula in all of mathematics is uh, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. I'm, I'm sure most of you uh, remember that quite well, but we'll go over it. Don't worry uh, if you don't remember it so well. 
So what I want to do here is uh, read the problem. It says a piece of wire measuring 20 feet is attached to the top of a telephone pole. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to picture... Um, here we go. I want you to picture um, this uh, being a telephone pole right here. Okay, and they tie uh, this wire to it because sometimes when you have a pole coming out of the ground, sometimes it's in danger of falling. Okay, like if it's just unstable or whatever, if there's heavy winds or something. And so they use this wire to tie it down. Okay, this wire is 20 feet long, as it says. Okay, uh, now it says ultimately, it says, What is the height of the pole? That's the reason why I put my X right there. That again, as always, the variable represents what they ask for. So that's your X. It also says that uh, the bottom of the wire right here is uh, if you take that distance from the bottom of the wire to the bottom of the pole, doesn't it say that that's four feet greater than the height itself? And we know that four greater than means four plus the height. Four greater than the height means four plus the height. And so that's why I wrote four plus X down there. And so what that leads to is it leads to this triangle. And that's why we're doing the Pythagorean theorem, because the Pythagorean theorem is when you have um, a, it's not just any triangle, it's only going to work for a right triangle where you have a 90 degree angle. The C is always, you guys, it's very important, the C is always the side that's opposite the right angle. So you got to plug in 20 into C right here, okay? And then the A and the B, it doesn't matter which one's which right there. You could put the, the X into either A or B as long as you put the 4 plus the X into the other one, okay? Which I, I, I said X plus 4, that's the same thing. You could say 4 plus X. It'll come out the same answer, don't worry. So there's my equation right there, a legitimate one variable equation, which is all I need because I only have one variable in the problem. It only asks for one thing. So I then solve that. As you guys know, when you have a, a parenthesis, you got to clear those out first. I did this right here. Okay, let me move that over so you can see it better. And so uh, that clears it out. Let me bring that answer down here into this step. Okay, and that gives me this equation now that I've cleared out the parentheses there. So it looks like it's quadratic, so we move everything to one side. I did that. Let me go over this carefully. Um, I didn't write out every single little thing here. So I subtracted the 400 over, and then I also combined like terms of, the, uh, of these terms that are already over there. And so I end up getting this right here. Okay. Um, Thankfully, once again, there's a GCF that makes it a little bit easier. Okay, and then uh, we do the Berry method on this um, for negative 192 with 4 in the middle. 16 and negative 12 will be the numbers that will work right there. Okay, 16 and negative 12. And so um, that's why I put the 16 and the negative 12 in there. Okay. Once again, we have three factors. All right. And we set all three of those equal to zero. Let me move this over a little bit more. We set all of those equal to zero. We solve each one of those, but the first one, again, is no solution, no variable there. Um, and then uh, these ones, uh, one of them is negative and one of them is positive. So since we're talking about height here, it's just like length and width. Height cannot be negative. So we throw out the negative 16 answer, and we just keep the positive 12. 12 feet is your final answer. And so that's uh, the conclusion of section 5.7. All right, please contact me with any issues like usual. Have a good day.